Okay, um, welcome back everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone is on the call. Uh, we will just continue with what we were uh, discussing earlier. So I said that uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the God kind of love and then answer some questions you have, then move on to the next uh, subject here. Um, so I thought it will be useful for us to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, I'll read from verses 4 to 8, uh, but you know, in a paraphrased version, just so we can um, get a grasp of what this this love is all about, you know, the kind of love that we are talking about. So uh, the paraphrased version um, uh, here in our notes, it's uh, there. You can just have a look at it. Uh, so the same verses says, love, God's love in us is patient, it's kind, is not jealous, is not boastful, competing or trying to outdo the other. It is not arrogant or vain glorying. God's love is not rude or ill-mannered. It is not self-seeking, self-promoting, or self-centered. It is not irritable or easily angered. It is not malicious, cunning, conniving, and has no evil intent. Love, God's love, does not celebrate or promote sin or ungodliness. Love celebrates truth righteousness and holiness love endures through all things it believes the best for every person in every situation it hopes envisions and sees the best the good in the midst of every situation and can stand through any trial or hardship this kind of love the god kind of love expressed through us will never fail or fall short of affecting god's will and purpose and its fruit will remain. So uh, that is the kind of uh, love that we are talking about. And we must really ask God to help us um, carry that, that um, quality of love. Um, not a human love, but God kind of love. Now, even when it comes to uh, us doing the work of God, there's a beautiful scripture that uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. So in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, uh, if someone is there, could you kindly read it? It's there in your notes, 1 Timothy 1 and verse 5. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. Okay. Thank you. So uh, you see there again, it says, what is the purpose of uh, the instructions of God or the commandment of God? It is love. And a couple of other things are added. A pure heart. Pure heart is what? Pure, pure is um, uh, when we are when we are walking by the standards of God's holiness. That is purity. So from a pure heart where uh, we we are doing it God's way we are doing it uh, uh, in, from the based on the truth of of God's word so that is purity so love from a pure heart uh, from a good conscience what is a good conscience a good conscience is where we don't have um, you know the Holy Spirit pricking us or convicting us and saying hey that's wrong uh, you should not have done that. So when our conscience is clear, there's nothing in our conscience where uh, we feel like, you know, I, I made a mistake or I should not have done that. There's nothing like that. We've dealt with everything and we are walking in such a way that our conscience is not uh, pricking us anymore. Okay, um, And sincere faith, that is also associated. So this is what God has for us he wants us to um, uh, walk in love which comes from a pure heart good conscience and sincere faith uh, and that that is the way you know, we must um, uh, walk so in other words you know our motivation should not uh, be evil or we should have good motivation we should not have any evil intent hypocrisy 
instead we must be sincere uh, in love so uh, i'll take the question in the chat but if you have more questions you can always ask so sunny moses is asking uh, uh, pastor does uh, doubt and fear both go together doubt and fear yes uh, um, sunny they go together because doubt will produce fear okay fear all kinds of fear but primarily doubt will uh, give us fear that says god will not do what he said he would do okay so i hope that answers your question all right yeah thank you so anything else uh, with regard to faith or hope or love any practical questions Okay, so Sanjay has posted, we all have faith the sun will rise tomorrow, whether we believe in God or not. Nobody questions the assurance of the sun. We don't hope that the sun may rise tomorrow. Okay, we have no doubts that the sun will follow its course and we will all live to see another day. If we can exercise the same faith in the one who created the sun, the moon, and the stars, it will change the way we think and live. Okay, that's a, a nice insight there and a pointer. Thank you, Sanjay, for sharing that thought. Uh, yeah, how true. We so easily can believe uh, in the sun rising, and yet when it comes to other things that God says, uh, we find it hard. Yeah. Any any other thoughts or uh, questions? All right. So I'm assuming that uh, whatever uh, we've examined uh, regarding these topics is sufficient. So I'll move on to the next. Uh, uh, chapter here this is chapter 8 and it talks about the believers walk of faith uh, and this chapter essentially reminds us that the life of a believer is a life of faith from the beginning till the end right from the beginning in between and till the end so without faith uh, we we cannot say that we are journeying with god so uh, look at the title, Believer's Walk of Faith. Uh, how, how do we have faith? Only if we believe. And that is why we are known as believers. So Believer's Walk of Faith. So how does our journey in God start? We start through um, accepting the work of Jesus on the cross. Okay, And the Bible teaches us that we receive salvation by faith. Okay, through faith we receive salvation uh, can somebody uh, please read for us from ephesians chapter 2 uh, verses 8 and 9 it is also there in the notes uh, if you can read it out by grace. okay either go one ahead, john go ahead john For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for reading that uh, passage. So uh, it tells us, how are we saved? We are saved uh, by grace. Okay. We are saved by grace. Through faith. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved. Through faith. How else have we not been saved? Not because of ourselves. So that not of yourselves. 
it is the gift of god verse 9 not of works lest anyone should boast so the bible clearly says that we are now saved and we have salvation because we put our faith in what jesus has done not in our good works there are um, philosophies in the world where people believe that by doing good things, uh, God will forgive them. They can attain salvation. They believe in their performance before God. Uh, however, the Bible is very clear. It says, no, whatever we do is not good enough for us to uh, be forgiven and uh, receive salvation from God. But God has done it for us. So we by faith, and it also says grace. What is grace? Grace is uh, unmerited favor, or it is, uh, um, you know, even despite who we are, God, God is still good to us, right? Not because we deserve it. God has given his best to us, even though we don't deserve it. That is what grace is. So because by faith, grace and through faith we have received salvation so the starting or the beginning of every believer's journey begins by faith isn't it so uh, whether we realize it or not all of us because all of us are believers all of us on this call are believers there was a faith that was used for us to receive salvation okay so we all got saved through faith and that is necessary for any believer to start their journey now once we have started on this journey right uh, by grace through faith what happens after that the bible calls us to walk by faith okay uh, there are uh, three particular scriptures listed in our notes but i will request somebody to uh, read the the second and the third one so romans 117 and romans 14 23 if someone can read that uh, pastor can i read yes please go ahead diksha or in it the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith okay great next one uh, what he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin all right thank you uh, so at least two uh, key points to emphasize in romans 117 it says the just shall live by faith. So our living is day to day. Our living is, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so when we live or when we are alive, how are we supposed to live as believers? The just shall live by faith, meaning uh, faith has to be a part of our lives. That means uh, in, in the way we think, in the way we speak, in the way we act, right? The choices that we make, the values that we carry, um, or uh, you, you could look at our jobs, our careers, everything, or even our families, our relationships. There's got to be faith in everything. So as a believer, I, I need to live by faith day to day in all matters. I need to live by faith. In fact, Romans 14, 23 is a very strong scripture. Uh, it says that uh, whatever is not from faith is sin. So anything that we do which is not from faith, it's not acceptable to God. Remember, we saw in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 6, that faith pleases God. God is happy only when we are walking by faith but when we are walking in doubt uh, that is actually sin the bible says doubt is sin so there's no place for doubt in a believer's life um, but 
as we've seen the journey of abraham god is patient with us god is, uh, god helps us god strengthens us he understands that you know we may be weak in our in our faith but he will help us to develop the faith if we are uh, you know uh, determined to grow our faith in him so it's important to live our life by faith everything that we do uh, if you remember we talked about uh, abel right cain and abel uh, and uh, i said that we don't read much about abel in the bible uh, the bible is quite silent about his life but when you look at hebrews chapter 11 suddenly again abel is mentioned over there because of that one sacrifice only one action that he performed but by faith so you uh, it is helps us recognize that god is taking note maybe even one thing just one thing we do but when we do it by faith it pleases god we may, we may do godly things but in doubt but what does the bible say anything which is not of faith is sin so doubt is sin and as a believer uh i need to develop myself in faith okay god will help god will be gracious uh, through our weaknesses but that doesn't mean that you know we can continue in uh, doubt and unbelief uh, we we got to work on our faith now moving on uh, sister gertrude i can see your question but i thought i'll i'll come to it in the end when we are dealing with all questions uh, and i hope that's okay yeah, okay uh, sister okay okay sure thank you so uh, the third point here in the notes it says faith is key to receiving from god so in the book of james there is a passage where james uh, encourages the believer he's talking about uh, difficulties he's talking about uh, trials he's talking about uh, you know challenging times and in those times what is one supposed to do so in james chapter 1 verse 5 he says if anyone lacks wisdom because sometimes in our difficult moments what we need the most is god's wisdom we don't know what to do but god will give us the wisdom to deal with that situation so james is encouraging the believers and saying if you lack wisdom or if you don't have wisdom let him you ask god and god will give liberally to all without reproach okay uh, and then he goes on to say in that passage he says but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the lord so james is teaching us a truth here he's saying when we ask ask in faith don't ask in doubt because when we ask in doubt what happens he's saying don't even expect you won't get it if there's doubt you won't get it but when there is faith one will get it because god gives liberally he's also talking about god as a giver of good things of blessings that are promised by god how does god give it's so encouraging uh, you know paul uh, so you james he says that uh, god gives liberally liberally is generously god will give generously even wisdom god will give generously and uh, he says without reproach without reproach reproach is like um, you know when uh, sometimes um, let's say um, parents may may give their children something right uh, but they may give and yet they may scold them they may say something like uh, you always keep asking i have to give you okay fine take it you know with a with a scolding that is like giving with reproach where uh, there is some some sort of uh, you know uh, like uh, condemning associated with the giving but james is reminding us see god is so good if you want something uh, you ask in faith in this case wisdom god who gives liberally or he gives generously and he doesn't even he doesn't even condemn you for asking for that so uh, out of his goodness god will give but if we ask without faith 
what is he saying forget it if you don't have faith if we don't ask if if we carry doubt then it's not going to happen okay so uh we said that we our journey of faith started or our salvation begins by faith uh, every day in everything that we do we must carry faith uh, the third one that we are saying here is that uh, when we ask god for something to receive it we must ask in faith now moving on faith gives us the victory okay uh, there is a passage uh, first john 5 verse 4 uh, would another person like to read it somebody else who has not yet read Verses today. One John five verse four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, yeah. and this is a victory that has overcome the world, our faith. All right. Thank you, Brother Sanjay. So, ah, uh, we we are talking about a. a uh, victorious life in this world all right so uh, we are talking about journeying in god by faith receiving from god by faith now living a victorious life by faith uh, is what we are uh, focusing in on so how to have a victorious life here uh, apostle uh, john he says that whatever is born of god overcomes the world which means you and i we are believers we are born of god spiritually uh, we have this rebirth in christ jesus he says that we are overcomers when we say overcome what is the concept or what is the understanding you know it's like a wrestling match we've all seen wrestlers and uh, at the end of the wrestling match the person who is who has overcome or generally in a wrestling uh, the the loser is below and the the person who has won is is uh, has overpowered that loser so when we think of this concept of overcome it's like that like we are on top of the devil we are on top of uh, the works of the evil one uh, you know whatever that may be and so uh, john is saying that we believers or we who have salvation we overcome the world we are victorious in every situation how are we victorious we are victorious through our faith so when we walk by faith we can overcome every work of the devil he also uses another thought here he says this is the victory that has overcome the world this is the victory that has overcome the world what is world when we look at the greek word for world there uh, it's cosmos cosmos is the systems that exist around us so we can look at uh, you know all the systems the uh, you know the the political system the religious system the business system we can see different things uh, systems in in this world and uh, many of which may be influenced by the enemy okay but here is our assurance as long as we are walking by faith no matter what system the enemy has um, uh, built up we can overcome it so as a believer you know we can always say that oh i'm living in such an evil world like pastor you don't understand you know uh, there's uh, social media there's uh, uh, you know all these uh, influences it's uh, double it, it's doubling and tripling the evil around me so i'm a believer but i'm finding it so difficult to to live for christ to be uh, free from sin but you know what it's nothing different think about the times when daniel lived right daniel lived in babylon was it easy for him no it was not easy think of the time when lot he had uh, you know evil people around him so in that sense the world is like that you know the cosmos it is influenced by by satan and we know that it is corrupted in sin so uh, yes we may have very different uh, influences today but it's not like we can't overcome it every child of god even in uh, in the bible 
in Christian history have testimonies of overcoming the evil of the world. So today, as a believer, if you and I are walking by faith, yes, the world uh, has very strong influence, strong evil influence. But what is John saying? He's saying, look, anything that is born of God, that is you and me, uh, we overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So when we walk by faith, we can overcome every influence of the world, every influence of Satan. We can have a victorious Christian life. A, a life of faith is a victorious Christian life. So uh, that is something that God is calling us to, to have a victorious Christian life uh, in this world. That so The fifth point here about uh, you know, a believer's walk of faith. Faith is our shield against the enemy. When we consider the armor, uh, uh, you know, the armor uh, of God, which protects us as a believer. Why do we need an armor? Anyone? Why do we even need an armor? Do we need an armor? Yes, to fight the principalities and uh, um, yeah, principalities of the evil one, Satan. Yes, true. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. So uh, uh, you see, the, the Bible says that whether we like it or not, okay, whether we acknowledge it or not, uh, whether we are aware about it or not, all of us are living uh, in the world which has an active enemy. So Satan is there, his demons are there, and they are constantly at war with uh, you know God, God's people, God's purposes. So uh, automatically we are in war zone. Okay, it's a spiritual war zone. Of course, we don't see anything in the natural, things look very calm, uh, but in the spiritual realm. There is a battle which is raging and uh, we cannot be unprotected in the battle. Uh, and therefore, every believer needs to have an armor, a spiritual armor. Ephesians 6 talks about it. Uh, there are different parts of the armor, you know, the, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith. So we've got to carry all these things. Uh, but right now, you know, I'll just talk about the shield of faith. So in the armor there is something known as a shield uh, we all are aware that uh, a shield protects us uh, if you've watched uh, you know movies in the past with uh, uh, people uh, in ancient times fighting with bows and arrows uh, you you would have seen that you know when arrows come people hold up a shield they just hold it up and it hits the shield but it doesn't harm them so in the same way in the roman uh, in the roman army uh, and uh, the way the uh, roman soldiers used to protect themselves paul uses that language and that's why he says the shield of faith so there is something that protects the roman soldier which is the shield and uh, a soldier has to hold up the shield and today we who are believers you know we are like those soldiers in the spiritual warfare uh, when satan is throwing different kinds of arrows what are the arrows of satan what could be the arrows of satan or the attacks of satan doubts yes doubts what else fear Fear, very right. Anything else he attacks us with? Allegations. Okay. Allegations, deception, confusion, anger, temptation. Temptation. Yeah, temptation. That's true. All these things. Yes. Uh, anything more? Please feel free. Lust. Yeah, lust. Okay. Uh, lust, depression, pride. Very correct. So, guilt. True. So, you see, uh, whether we can see it or not in the spiritual realm you can imagine with me all these arrows are coming at all of us uh, maybe every day how to protect how to protect ourselves how to protect my heart walk by faith so when we walk by faith it's like a shield arrow may come but it'll never hit because there is a shield of faith as a believer i'm carrying faith in my heart I'm using faith in every attack of the devil. 
right so the the, the enemy comes and he says uh, you know uh, you're not forgiven immediately i hold up my shield of faith i say no but you know uh, 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 through 9 says that if we confess our sins god is faithful to forgive us and remove our our uh, sins as far as the east is from the west so what am i doing just the way jesus dealt with satan during the 40 days of temptation what did jesus do he said it is written it is written he started uh, fighting back with the word of god so as a believer, I fight the devil with my faith. I say, no devil, you're lying. I am forgiven. This is what the word of God says. What is that? I'm holding up my shield and the enemy cannot destroy me. The enemy will find so difficult. He'll be like, oh, this person, I just cannot you know, uh, make a strong attack. They're always defending themselves by faith. So Satan wants, he, he, desperately wants to destroy one thing in the life of every believer and that is faith if he can destroy our faith he's got it he's got us because then there's no protection there's no shield all the other attacks will come right that is so important for us to remember i must uh, walk protected as a child of god and what gives me my protection my faith I cannot afford for my faith to be um, weak at any given point in time. So when I'm walking strong in the word of God, when I'm walking firm in the word of God, okay, let any attack come, no problem, because the shield of faith is something that we can raise up against the devil and his arrows will be destroyed. All right, let's move ahead. Now, uh, uh, the next important thing about journeying with faith is to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, when we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Bible teaches us that we can only receive it by faith. So Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14. It is there in the notes. Can somebody read it? It's in point 6. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14, please. Galatians chapter 3 verse 14, 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, thank you, sister. So, uh, he specifically, Paul writes to the Galatians and he says, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, how? Through faith. So when we look at the Old Testament, we find that there are passages where God spoke and he said that I will pour out my Spirit in the last days. So the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, we find the prophecy where God said in the last days, uh, the, the Spirit of God will be poured out. But how to receive it? How to receive it? Paul clearly says the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we can receive uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or the baptism in the Holy Spirit through faith. Okay. Uh, a lot of people ask uh, how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. What is, what is that uh, important element that we need to receive the baptism? You know, Jesus talked about uh, in Matthew chapter 7 and also in uh, you know Luke chapter 11, uh, he said that uh, if a son asks a father you know, for bread uh, or, or for fish, will the father give him a snake, right? If the son asks the father for bread, will the father give him stones? So he was trying to remind us in Matthew chapter 7, he says, uh, at the end of that passage, he says, so ask. You will receive, seek, you will find, knock, the door will be open to you. Uh, and then he goes on to say that uh, it, is, it, it has pleased God's heart to give us the kingdom. So when we ask God you know, for his Holy Spirit, will he not give it to us? So all of this is being spoken in the context of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus was trying to tell us, you know, if we ask 
for the baptism in the Holy Spirit by faith. Why is it that God will not give us the Holy Spirit? He will give us. Just believe that He will give the Holy Spirit to us and we will receive. So how to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? By faith. Just have faith in God's word. God, you have said in your word that you will baptize uh, us in the Holy Spirit. So we are believing it. And uh, by faith, you know, you can pray over people. By faith, you can minister to people. And people can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And even we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit by faith. So faith is the key uh, for being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, people may have questions. They'll say, oh, but, you know, we prayed and it didn't happen. Uh, what to do? How to uh, really minister in such a way that people receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? So remember, we, we said earlier that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So when people uh, are struggling to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we can first build faith. How to do that? teach the word, teach the, the uh, promises uh, of God about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, teach about how it was ministered in the book of Acts. So when we teach the word, what is supposed to happen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we've built up faith in the hearts of the people. After that, invite them to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, pray over them, and when their faith is built up, they'll be able to receive the uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit. So uh, that is about receiving the Spirit by faith. Similarly, when it comes to the exercise of spiritual gifts. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul talks about uh, spiritual gifts, which uh, are the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, in in uh, the life of a believer, in the in the gathering of believers. So, how can one operate in these gifts? Gifts are uh, spirit. Uh, gifts of the spirit are like tongues, prophecy, word of knowledge, uh, word of wisdom discerning of spirits, uh, the working of healings, the working of miracles. So how can one operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? In Romans chapter 12 and verse 6, uh, again, Paul said that if anyone, you know, if their gift is prophecy, let them prophesy in proportion to their faith. So Romans 12, 6, he tells us that he who wants to operate in one of the gifts, which would be prophecy, how to operate? In proportion to faith. So that is how the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit also take place. So if I want to um, move in the gifts, let's say tongues or uh, prophecy, or I want to receive words of knowledge, how will it come to me? One of the important things is to um, uh, have faith. So the more we build our faith about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we'll see that we are able to flow better. Okay. Um, so yeah, just build faith, and uh, that will enable us to to be stronger in the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, there is one more scripture with regard to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, where in Galatians 3 and verse 3, again, you know, Paul uh, talks to the Galatians and he says, having begun in the spirit. Okay, what, what is he talking about? He's walk, talking about, you know, um, uh, walking in the spirit, operating in the gifts of the spirit. Uh, and he says, Galatians, you began in the spirit and you need to continue in the spirit. Okay, so this can only happen by faith. Uh, it, this cannot happen according to the works of the flesh. So operation in the gifts of the Spirit, receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, all of these depend on our faith. So keep our faith strong. And uh, towards the end here, the eighth uh, point says that one must fight a good fight of faith. Okay. Uh, 
so Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, uh, one of his mentees, uh, he said that uh, I have fought a good uh, fight, I have finished the race. But how did he do it? He states that the good fight is a fight of faith. So even towards the end of our lives, you know, it's a great thing, actually. Um, I've heard this said by others. But I I believe it too uh, that everybody starts strong, okay. Generally, people start with a lot of enthusiasm. But when we see people who are finishing strong, at the end of their journey, they are still in faith. They have still kept the faith. They are still strong in the Lord. You know that is something for us to um, appreciate. That is something for us to honor. You know when we see such people, oh wow, they at the end of their lives. They've still stood for God. They've worked for God. They've lived for God. Uh, you know, we want to be like that. Uh, and, and that was Paul's testimony to Timothy. He said, look, Timothy, it's been hard. It's been challenging. But I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. Right? And now uh, the, the, the crown is awaiting for me. So the journey of faith, it's not that uh, you know, promise by promise, I trust in God, and that's all the journey of faith is about. Uh, assignment by assignment, I put my faith in God, and then, you know, I'm just happy about it. No, there's more to that. We start by faith, we live by faith, we are victorious by faith, we receive the Spirit by faith, we operate in the gifts of the Spirit by faith, uh, and we must also finish our journey by faith. So from the beginning till the end, what is it that we require uh, in our lives as believers? Faith. We can never take that uh, lightly and uh, must keep working on it. So I'll move on to questions here. Uh, I'll just come to the chat section. My sister Gertrude had uh, uh, stated, what is the difference between faith as a gift of the spirit and fruit of the spirit. OK, just give me a moment, sister. Uh, so sister just uh, wanted to say that, you know, uh, yeah, uh, faith as a Gift of the Spirit, remember, I talked about how to operate uh, in the gifts of the Spirit. You you need uh, uh, the grace and gift to do, uh, grace and faith to do that. Okay, so the faith as a gift of the Spirit, it will operate whenever it is required. Uh, for example, I think I gave this example of um, uh, Peter and John. Uh, in Acts chapter 3 at the gate, beautiful, where suddenly, you know, they see a man who uh, has not walked right, for, for many years. Uh, but in that moment, they sense that God wants to heal that person. You really need the operation of something like the gift of faith, uh, because it's huge. This man has never walked his whole life. And now they're going to minister a miracle for this particular person. So we can, we can say that the gift of faith would have been operational at that time for them to heal this man. OK, so the gift of uh, faith uh, is a gift of the spirit. And it is operational whenever it is required. OK, so that's the point I'm making. Now coming to faith as a fruit of the spirit. So in the list, sister, actually, um, Ephesians chapter 5, isn't it? The fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, Galatians 5, sorry. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Uh, it's not in the list. Faith is not in the list as far as the fruit of the Spirit is concerned. OK, so then, uh, yeah, faith. Uh, I, so I hope it's clear. I've described um, faith as a gift of the spirit and fruit of the spirit, but then faith is not included in it. Is that OK?
it says faithfulness uh, not faith yeah so faithfulness has a different uh, yeah. meaning there okay okay sister thank you yeah okay thank you uh, coming here to lucy how do we work on our faith as a believer to fight temptation in particular to fight temptation okay uh, so to fight temptation lucy uh, we can identify the areas where we are tempted right most of the time so we all know our areas of weaknesses so then faith should be built up uh, by the word so for example let's say uh, i am i am suffering in the area of lust okay so then what should i do i should build my faith uh, to overcome lust every time so then uh, i would need to meditate on scripture uh, things like you know passages like um, god has said be holy as i am holy uh, or um, uh, i could uh, i could go to the book of thessalonians where it says uh, it is the will of god our sanctification flee every uh, you know um, youthful lusts flee youthful lusts so what am i doing as i'm beginning to specifically meditate on scriptures in that area of my weakness then uh, my faith will in increase okay and uh, when my faith increases then i will be in a better position to overcome that temptation all right so i i hope that answers your question uh, you also said without knowing the wasting of time uh, could you could you just uh, clarify i didn't get that will be not knowing about uh, how how we waste our time sister like just uh, just flow flow like yeah yeah sure okay so uh you're saying that that is a temptation yes sister but oh. means instead of doing better works yeah 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 okay so uh in that situation sister maybe you know maybe we are wasting time because we don't have clarity we don't have um, you know clarity of thought and the clarity of purpose so uh, it may help to take time to reflect you know like why am i spending so much time uh, like what are all the thoughts within me which i am not able to uh, resolve uh, so for this maybe personally you can reflect or if you require help right help would mean that you can talk to somebody who is strong in god like maybe an elder or a pastor or a uh, or even a counselor a good counselor you can you can talk where they can help us to uh, to guide our thoughts and uh, that may actually help uh, this issue you know where where we are we, we are just uh, wasting time without clarity uh, so Oh, okay, yeah, just okay, some of my thoughts there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, sure. anything else uh, with regard to the journey of faith? Okay. So, by faith. Uh, I must uh, close this class thinking that, you know, everything is understood, right? Uh, but yes, please do go back, read your notes. I'm sure that will give you a better understanding and a stronger grip on these truths uh, so that each of us can apply in our lives. Uh, so sure, let's go ahead and uh, close this class. But just one quick thing regarding the assignment, I have given uh, a Word document to every student on Google Classroom. Uh, so you can start answering in that document right away. So one good feature of Google uh, Classroom is that you it'll save. It'll keep saving whatever you write on it. So you don't have to start writing uh, you know, uh, uh, at the due, due date. Uh, but you can begin writing now, and you can keep building your your uh, answers uh, and maybe 
when you're done, whenever you're finished, you can hit the submit button. So that's a nice feature. Make use of it. Uh, you can start working on your assignments whenever you find time and keep building it. OK, so with that, let's close. Uh, would someone like to pray, please? And we'll wrap up the class. Heavenly Father, we just would like to thank you for this uh, this uh, study on faith. And we just pray, Father, that uh, your Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us um, as we learn more about faith and we exercise our faith in accordance with thy word and thy will. Help us, Lord, in our everyday life. Let this uh, journey of building our faith um, strengthen us, Father in our day-to-day -day, day -day lives. Give us a hunger for your word, Lord, that we may be able to invest more time in thy word to grow in, in our faith. And let our faith also encourage others in their faith. And bless us, Lord, in not only the subject of faith, but in every subject related to our course, Lord. So we will grow stronger as believers and, and uh, encourage others in our walk. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, Daniel Oliver is saying, can we write an A4 and scan and submit? I would discourage you from doing that because uh, it becomes difficult for the faculty to correct. So uh, please please try to stick to the Google document. That That is the best way. OK? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. God bless. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Yes.